The following program is a PBS Wisconsin original production. Hit the road with Wisconsin's own Michael Perry. I have pretty much quadrupled the value of the tour van. Put new tires on it last week. So we are rolling in style. As he travels to Menominee and Stoughton. You know, all this excitement about electric cars. Yeah, I see your Tesla there, Spanky. We've been plugging in our car since about 1952, so. Telling some of his favorite stories. But you live in Wisconsin. And I say, yeah, and we have an open border agreement with Minnesota. And sharing passages from his books. At the earliest edges of my memory, my father is plowing, and I'm running behind him. That's one of the most important paragraphs to me that I've ever written. Ride along with Mike as he muses about life. I do have some rules about coffee. Number one, you don't put anything in it. I don't want to hear about, do you want room for cream? <laughs> it's Michael Perry on the road. Funding for this program is provided by Stanley J. Cottrell Fund, the ACV and Mary Elston family, the Eleanor and Thomas Wildrick family, Wooden Nickel Fund, Focus Fund for Wisconsin Programs, and Friends of PBS Wisconsin. How's she going there? <laughs> I'm going to begin this evening with a reading. And what I have come to count as my earliest memory, I am backing away from a dog. It is a short-haired dog, a herding dog, and it has backed me down the dark end of a barn. The dog is likely just curious, but her eyes are steadfast, and she advances with her nose extended stiffly. There is no sound but the flat-footed scrape of my heels as I edge them behind me like curb feelers. Far away up the concrete walk, the barn door is an open rectangle of light, but the dog is yielding nothing. The dog moves in, chesty and intent. I edge back again, and this time there's nothing beneath my heels. I tumble backward into the gutter, the dog spooks at the sudden movement, dipping her haunches and flaring to one side, but shortly her nose is poking along the gutter edge above me. I can see whitewashed rafters. The manure is mud bath soft and black strap dark. <laughs> above all, it smells sweet. It is not so deep that I am in any danger, but I am well over three quarters marinated. I don't remember any panic or fear, perhaps because I had broken the spell of the dog, but I must have called out because my father appeared and pulled me from the muck. I was soon stripped of my togs and shivering under the garden hose. I assume the smell tarried well into the week. <laughs> I have a buddy who has watched his farm become a suburb. He gets hassled now when he runs his manure spreader. People object to the smell. Things change. I'm not going to get elegiac. But I'm glad cow manure is one of the trace elements of my existence. It inoculated me against everything to follow. <laughs> Gave me an organic sense of calibration. Wherever I am, whatever I face, I think of me looking up and that dog looking down. What a delightful place to start. <laughs> I love the road, I always have. 
I was lucky. I grew up on a farm in rural Wisconsin, but I had a grandfather who took us traveling. Even my father, he took me on my first real trip out west to Wyoming, and we drove out there. I was 16 years old, just got my license. And I really got hooked on the road and movement and motion. I kind of am split between two worlds. I love being home and in my quiet little room on our little farm and not seeing anybody. But I also love the wide open road. It's a freedom thing, there's no question. When you reach my level, you have a dedicated tour van, in this case, a 2002 Toyota Sienna that used to be the family minivan and then it got demoted. So I took the seats out of the back and I put a cargo net behind me so that I don't get killed by my own books, which would be ironical. This is pretty much it, whether it's the band or the books, and usually it's both. I just throw it all in the back of this van and off we go. So I come from a little place just north of here called New Auburn. Unless you grew up there, then it's called Nauburn. <laughs> and I always say, no matter where I'm standing when I say it, I am grateful to be of and from New Auburn. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a book called Population 485. And <laughs> Population 485 is that old Can You Go Home Again book. It's been written many, many times by many different people, many different ways. In my case, I wrote about going back to my hometown of New Auburn after being away for 12 years. Um, since that book has come out, I've received numerous emails and letters, and right up to the present, just got one last week, and they invariably follow a certain pattern. They say, you know, we read your book about life in the small town, and we loved it. We loved it so much that we've sold everything, and we're moving to a small town. <laughs> and I'll say, well, hang on there, Spanky. The small towns have long memories. You, you can be 50 years old trying to live down something that happened when you was 15 in the gravel pit. <laughs> and even me, when I moved back, I was, uh, I was a little uncertain because I'd been away for 12 years. I didn't know how I was going to fit in. And Because like, what I like to say is that um, when I left New Auburn, I was a good student, a fair defensive end, and a farm boy. I returned 12 years later a long-haired writer with soft hands and a nursing degree. <laughs> so there's a certain amount of street cred to recover <laughs> with some of my buddies in the deer hunting crowd. <laughs> I've since had to update the anecdote specifically as it pertains to the long hair. Uh, for years, I had long hair, waist length. There's two reasons I no longer have long hair, and the first, sadly, is just generalized crop failure. <laughs> just got to the point where there was no point. <laughs> And the other reason is that it was still real long and back, but it started to get very thin on top. And I remember looking in the mirror one day and I said, you know, you really ought to cut it off. You're, you're headed for the Ben Franklin look. <laughs> but I hadn't made the move yet. And then we got paged out to fight a grass fire on the railroad track south of town. Now, I was right up in the teeth of the flames as a volunteer firefighter, fighting from the black, as any well-trained wildland firefighter will tell you that you must. But I was right up in there, and all of a sudden, one of the other firefighters ran up and started patting me. <laughs> now, normally, you don't get a lot of that. <laughs> so I said, what are you doing? And he said, man, your hair's on fire. And indeed, it was crackling right along. So at that point, I thought, you know, if it ain't falling out, it's bursting into flames. <laughs> so I just cut it all off. But I, I wound up on the fire department for a specific reason. When I moved back, as I said, I was not the same guy when I came back to New Auburn as I was when I left. But I wanted to be part of the community. I, part of the problem there is that I'm pretty much a loner. My happiest place in the world is alone in my room, just riding. 
Um, and when I moved back to New Auburn, I, I didn't belong to any of the local churches. I don't drink, so I didn't go to any of the local taverns. Uh, I don't bowl. I don't play softball. <laughs> and I can't polka. <laughs> so there really wasn't much left except to join the local volunteer fire department. Now, I work with a lot of folks on the coast, uh, mostly New York and the East Coast, but also uh, occasionally a few people from LA, and they find out that I'm still on the volunteer fire department, and they say, oh, you must be very brave and noble. <laughs> and I always say, eh, <laughs> not especially. <laughs> and then I explain to them that in a town like New Auburn, a guy like me ends up on the fire department because I got the two things they're looking for, a pulse and a valid driver's license. <laughs> Plus, I'm home a lot during the day. So, but anyways, they're always, oh yeah, you're so brave and noble. And I, and I, also, I also have to explain that when I moved back to New Auburn, my two brothers and my mom were already on the fire department. <laughs> So it was really just kind of a peer pressure situation. I just didn't want to be the only one with no stories. <laughs> Somehow I've developed this odd little career. I don't really even know what to call it. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly, I'm not famous. Now, my name is recognizable in certain discrete circles, um, often involving public radio tote bags. Um, but also, I'm happy and proud and grateful to say, um, also some, some feed bags. I've shaken some nice calloused hands at these events. But I am not famous. I used to write about famous people. I spent a lot of time in the company of famous people, observing them, traveling with them. I, I, I know famous. I am not famous. Uh, when I walk into the farm and fleet, I, I don't take security or nothing. I just... I just walk right in there, man of the people. Um, and the thing is, if you do, for even a moment, at least in my experience, let yourself think you are getting famous, karma has a way of cutting you down to size almost immediately. I have a couple of stories about that. When Population 45 first came out, it started doing better than anybody expected, including me, and they just kept extending my book tour. And it went from being a Midwestern book tour to further and further or farther and farther. We'll let the copy editor sort that out. Um, but anyways, um, they just kept adding on dates, and I, I wound up uh, in Nashville. So I drive into Nashville in my rental car. I get to the bookstore in Nashville, there's 35 people came to see me in Nashville. That's a pretty big number for a, a, an unknown writer from the Midwest. So that night, uh, when I left Nashville, headed for my next stop, Memphis, when I left Nashville, I thought, 35 people came out to see me in Nashville. The mic train is rolling. <laughs> so I was very excited to see what awaited me in Memphis. This is back when publishers still had money and they actually put you on tour and they put me up in the, the Peabody Hotel in Memphis, very famous hotel, very shishi. I got there and uh, very tired. At that time I had long scraggly hair. Uh, I wasn't dressed as nice as I am tonight. <laughs> and if you know about the Peabody Hotel, the thing that makes them famous, it's an ornate old hotel, but they have the ducks. And the ducks live on the roof in their little duck house, and then at some point during the day, or maybe more than once a day, they come down the elevator and they roll out a red carpet and they waddle across the red carpet into the fountain in the center of the hotel lobby there. And it's a very world famous thing and people gather to see them. So I get in at three in the morning, I had to get up at six or something for, I, it was really early and then I think I snuck back in for a nap. The point is at some point, I was checking out, I grabbed my suitcase, my roller bag, and my backpack, and I got my long hair, and I look like I've only slept for three hours and drove in from Nashville the night before, and I get on the, I get on the elevator, and I'm thinking about Nashville, you know, there's a lot of momentum building around this book, and, and we get down to the first floor, and the doors open, and there's just this explosion of cameras and people and a red carpet, and I thought, Oprah called. And then all the flashes just died down. Everybody looked at me with great disappointment. I realized I got on the duck elevator. <laughs> I 
But my favorite story about getting cut down to size fame-wise is only about three weeks old. So my father-in-law's name is Brad. My father-in-law owned some property adjacent to ours, and he was, uh, he was cutting trees. He needs a new chainsaw. So he's a, he's a former executive, so he called me to say, I need a new chainsaw. What do you recommend? I said, well, you're talking to the wrong Perry boy, but uh, my brother Jed's a logger. I said, I'll call Jed, and I'll ask him what he recommends. So I called my brother Jed, and he gives us all these great recommendations, very specific to what my father-in-law is looking for. And then at the end, my brother says, and he goes, if you really want good service and a good guy, take good care of you. He says, go on up there to, go on up there to Bruce, Wisconsin, and, and uh, go to Walt's Gun and Saw and ask for Brad. So I now have this beautiful story where I'm going to send Brad up to talk to Brad in Bruce at Walt's Gun and Saw. Some of this stuff writes itself. <laughs> so my father-in-law go, my father-in-law Brad goes up to Bruce to see Brad at Walt's Gun and Saw, and Brad is very helpful to Brad, and he gets him a wonderful chainsaw, gets him all set up, he's all ready to go. And Brad of Walt's Gun and Saw says to Brad, my father-in-law, well, how'd you hear about us? And my father-in-law says, well, my son-in-law's brother recommended you. And Brad of the saw shop says, well, wh what's his name? And my father-in-law said, Jed Perry. Oh, Jed, he's a good guy, heck of a logger. He, uh, he's a gem, that Jed. Well, what's your son-in-law's name? Mike Perry. Never heard of him. <laughs> I have a set list, a few sheets of paper with some notes in case I need to refer to something, but honestly, I've made a living out of going off on tangents. It's not really a set list, it's a hint list. So at some point, I'll just be talking and telling stories and I'll check my phone to see what time it is and go, hey, probably gotta wrap it up. Yeah. The story I'm gonna tell now, I, I don't have any smooth way to fit it in, except to say it's just a perfect example of how grateful I am that I grew up in a place that wasn't so perfect and smooth. Now, in high school, I ran track. Um, matter of fact, uh, I think it was my senior year, I was the track team. <laughs> this is it. And I ran the mile and the two mile, and I wasn't bad, and uh, I was competitive. And um, one of my main competitors was a kid from Weyerhaeuser, Wisconsin. And uh, he and I were always neck and neck. And so, the story I'm going to tell is that we had a track meet up in Weyerhaeuser. And the Weyerhaeuser track coach, he was not your prototypical distance athlete coach. Some people in this room might have even known him. He was a very kind man, very beloved. But he, uh, well, he, had, he wore the little satin track team jacket, you know, but it kind of only <laughs> came to here. <laughs> Plus, he burned a lot of heaters. <laughs> So we go up to Weyerhaeuser for this track meet. And what I'm building up to here is just one of my favorite quotes of all time. We go up to Weyerhaeuser for the track meet. Now, Weyerhaeuser doesn't have a track. At least they didn't then. What they did is they sent the janitor out with that, you know, that little cart that makes the white lines? He just made lanes around the football field. <laughs> so the lines were kind of crooked. Plus, you didn't so much have turns. as just, You just had corners. <laughs> So like you'd, you'd be running the mile, and then you just... <laughs> so, and honestly, I'm not make, I can make fun of Weyerhaeuser. New Auburn didn't even have a track either until, I think it was my senior year, they put in an asphalt track. And I'd been training really hard, and I was excited to see, in the off-season I'd been training, and I was excited to see if I'd made any progress. And the first day of practice on our brand new track there in New Auburn, the coach is timing my 400 splits, and they're off the charts. And I'm so happy, because I worked so hard all summer. And then we figured out that when they made the track, they did the math wrong. <laughs> the track was short, but it's exciting there for a while, man. I 
thought I was going to the Olympics. <laughs> but anyways, my, one of my favorite quotes of all time was, we went to, so I'm up to Weyerhaeuser, and I'm running the two mile, and me and my buddy from Weyerhaeuser, we're neck and neck as usual, and it's down to the last couple of laps, and if you ran distance at all, especially the two mile, once you're in the last two laps, you'd do anything to make it stop. You're just, you're an oxygen dead, it just hurts. You would love to just run off into the trees and disappear. But we're, we're competing and we're running, we're making those square corners. <laughs> and we come up to the second to the last corner and we're both just digging for everything we've got. And the warehouse track coach standing there at the corner, he's got his little jacket, you know, fat guy in a little coat. And uh, we run past him in a world of hurt and he just goes, come on guys, pick it up. Last night I was at the Mabel Tainter Theater in Menominee, Wisconsin. It's a lovely place. I've played there many times. One of my cousins got married there. The way it's built, it's quite intimate. The balcony is real steep and almost overhead, and so you really feel a closeness with the audience. And you know, I kind of had to give her that one. <laughs> Last night was one of those nights where it seemed like every little aside, every little punchline got out ten times bigger laugh than normal. <laughs> you feel within the first two, three minutes, you get that vibe. You hear that extra punch to the laughs, and it really kind of frees you up. You get that kind of floating sensation, and you, you feel free to say things you normally wouldn't say and take little chances and get little extra laughs. Last night just felt really nice, and I think we were all ready to laugh, too. Stephanie Elkins, host of Morning Classics on Wisconsin Public Radio, and so enjoying this program. We are on the road with Michael Perry, and laughing and enjoying, especially that Weyerhaeuser story. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Michael is here in the studio with us, and this is your third uh, program with, with, with PBS Wisconsin. Yeah, they just keep showing up with a camera, <laughs> so I say, well, hop in a van, let's go. <laughs> and these were filmed at some of these beautiful jewel boxes of, you know, Stoughton Opera House and Mabel Tainter. What is it like on the stage in those gorgeous one of my favorite things about this, this, those opera houses is uh, sitting backstage and then making the walk to the stage. If you go in Stoughton, you walk up a stairs and then another stairs and then you're in the wings. And all along, the walls have been signed by people who have performed there. And some of them are fairly contemporary and others are the 20s and 30s and 40s. And, and then at the Mabel Tainter, the same, the dressing rooms in the back are very tiny and you can tell they were built in another era. And just to sit there and think of, my understanding is a lot of the ones, especially in, in Menominee, where they were vaudeville entertainers who were coming from Chicago and on their way to the Twin Cities, and so they'd stop. And so you can just feel decades and centuries of performers walking through there. Feel that history, and we're bringing that to you along with the yeah. wonderful stories, and we're asking for your support at 800-236-3636. Thanks, Stephanie and Michael. And when you do call that number, 1-800-236-3636, or go online, pbswisconsin.org, or check the QR code on your TV right now and scan that and give your gift of support to PBS Wisconsin. We've got a number of great thank you gifts. Starting at the $10 monthly sustaining level, we will send you the DVD of the program you're enjoying tonight. Um, you, if you've heard one of Michael's stories, you're going to want to hear it again because we've been laughing all afternoon um, as, as we follow this uh, program. And you're going to want to share it with your friends and family. And what a great way to do that with this thank you gift right here. At the $15 sustaining monthly level, we will send you two of Michael's books, just two of those books that you see on that stack of books that he brought on stage with him, uh, Roughneck, Grace, and Coop. Um, both of them personally autographed by Michael that we'll send to you with the $15 sustaining monthly gift. And at a $25 monthly gift, we will send you the two books 
and we will also send you the DVDs of tonight's program and all three of the Michael Perry PBS Wisconsin specials that you've enjoyed over the last few years. Um, just a wonderful way to bring this great tradition and legacy of storytelling, this great tradition and legacy of Wisconsin into your home while supporting the great tradition and legacy of PBS Wisconsin with your gift right now at 1-800-236-3636. Hi, I'm Kermin Eckes on the staff here at PBS Wisconsin, and Eric was just talking about the great tradition of programming here on PBS Wisconsin, and this is a perfect example of some of that. This is the third special, um, as, as Mike and uh, 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 as we as they just mentioned, and. Um, it's it's so so important things like this are brought here because of you because of your support uh, people like like yourselves that say hey I'm so glad to see Michael Perry specials on PBS Wisconsin um, I'm willing to step forward and make a donation and and show my support financially for PBS Wisconsin so we can continue to bring you those wonderful programs about Wisconsin about the people of Wisconsin the ideas of Wisconsin um, and you can also do that by becoming a sustaining member. It's a great way for you to get your membership going. You, you set everything up and then you can basically forget about your membership. You don't have to worry about renewing or uh, calling in again. So we have many ways for you to join us here at PBS Wisconsin. Now go to those phones and dial 1-800-236-3636. Thanks for all that, Kerman. And it really feels good when you support something that you believe in and something that you love and that you use. Every time you view something on PBS Wisconsin, you know that it's, you're helping to make it happen. This is a brand new production and, oh, PBS Wisconsin does a great job, don't they? Oh, the cinematography and all of that. I think that one of the pleasures of doing this particular show was being on the road and watching how hard the crews work. That's the part that people don't see. I mean, there were folks crammed into that van with all my merch and all my gear <laughs> hanging halfway upside down. A couple of the days that we shot, the weather was miserable, and so they're keeping all their equipment going. And the thing I'll never forget was pulling up to um, the, the Opera House in Stoughton and seeing that truck there and realizing how many people were involved. So I'm just up there doing the easy part. It was amazing to see the conscientious work put into producing that show. There's a tremendous amount of work that goes into these productions, and it's only possible because of viewers. You allow these kinds of productions to happen at PBS Wisconsin, not just something like this, which is so funny and entertaining, but Wisconsin from the air and other wonderful high quality productions because of your support one viewer at a time one pledge at a time at 800-236-3636 and when you do call that number we've got those great thank you gifts to uh, share our appreciation for your donation tonight at 1-800-236-3636 we're going to be going back to the program in a little bit and there's a lot more great stories from Michael uh, throughout the evening, but we know it's the type of program that you're going to want to watch over and over again and share with your family, and you can do that at the $10 sustaining level with the DVD of Michael Perry on the Road, the program that you're enjoying tonight on PBS Wisconsin. At the $15 level, we're going to send you two of Michael's uh, books, personally autographed. I watched him personally autograph these books that he's going to be that we're going to be sending to you at the uh, $15 monthly level, Roughneck, Grace, and Coop. And at the $25 monthly level, we are going to send you all three of the Michael Perry PBS Wisconsin specials and the two books um, and, and as our way of saying thank you for your support. So call right now, support great programming like this all year round on PBS Wisconsin, 1-800-236-3636. Well, Eric has just run through our thank you gifts, and we have lots of them. So if you need to hear about those again, when you talk to one of our volunteers, they can fill you in. Another great benefit of becoming a member of PBS Wisconsin is Airwaves. This is our monthly programming guide. It gets sent to you, and it's a great way to keep track of your viewing, see uh, specials that are coming up, other things that you might want to watch, other information and articles about some of the shows and people that we're, we're focusing on in that month. So it's a great benefit for you to have as a member of PBS Wisconsin. And again, it also starts by you going to the phone or going online, uh, talking to one of our volunteers and becoming a member of PBS Wisconsin. Remember when you do that, you're supporting not only specials like we're seeing tonight, but all of the wonderful shows that are here. So go to the phone right now and dial 1-800-236-3636. We heard some stories about your family, about uh, you uh, joining the fire department and your mom and your brothers already. Uh, so you're, you're gonna be, we're gonna be going back to the program in just a moment and there's more stories ahead about your family. And I have to ask, are they all good with this? Well, I didn't necessarily ask their permission. <laughs> 
<laughs> but one of my favorite parts of, of, this, uh, of this special is where I get to talk about telling a story and then having my brother fact check me <laughs> <laughs> at a family get together. So I have great deference to my family. They're very private, hardworking people. Um, I'm about the fourth funniest person in the family. I just was the one who couldn't fix tractors. Well, we're going to hear more stories from Michael Perry. We're going right back to the program, and we're asking for your support. Enjoy it, 800-236-3636, and know that we're grateful. I had one, what really can only be classified as the highest literary achievement available in the greater Chippewa County area. And that is that I have submitted and had accepted and read live on the air several liners for Moose Country 106.7. <laughs> so is my brother. <laughs> I'm about the fourth funniest person in the family. I'm just the only, only one who couldn't fix stuff. But anyways, if you're familiar, and apparently some of you are, the, the liners on Moose is it's always the premise is, if you're something, then you're one of us. If your first date involved a two-for-one coupon, <laughs> you're one of us. If you've ever lost your wedding ring in a parts washer, <laughs> you're one of us. I once lost my wedding ring in a sheep. There's not enough time this evening. <laughs> if you've ever used a hunk of firewood as an emergency break, you're one of us. If you ever got caught taste testing a salt block, <laughs> yeah. I like them maroon ones, you know, because they got mineral in them. Um, yeah. But they don't like it if you do it right there in the farm and fleet. <laughs> if you got to start a grass fire to locate your lawnmower, <laughs> you're one of us. And the last one for now, and this one's a tad more esoteric. It doesn't always get the biggest laugh, but it gets the right kind of laugh from the right kind of people. If all your finest silverware says, compliments of Citizens Telephone Cooperative, <laughs> you're one of us. Is everything in these stories true? I'm gonna say 92% accuracy. Now that's not about truth. I have no interest making up facts to get a laugh. I'm, and I'm deadly serious about that. Because if you can't be funny with a real story, then you should do, you know, announce that you're doing fiction and then go do funny fiction. That's cool too. I can speak to the experience of telling a story over and over and it takes little turns over time that you don't even realize it's taking. If you grew up like I did, and I know a lot of you did, nothing's funnier than somebody getting hurt. <laughs> if your buddy gets hit in the head with, with a monkey wrench, uh, once you determine that he's still breathing and probably going to be able to walk again, well, then nothing's funnier than your buddy getting hit in the head with a monkey wrench. <laughs> That's just how I grew up. We had a neighbor, Jerry, his name was, and... Um, he is an old farmer, Eastern European immigrant farmer. Very, he was the walking definition of the word stolid. Very sturdy, very quiet, very hardworking, very kind, very thoughtful, a wonderful neighbor. But there was only one thing that would really make him laugh, and that was you getting hurt. <laughs> I remember I was filling silo with him one time. We was hooking up the blower, and I stood up underneath that downspout a little too quickly, and I just rang it like a church bell. And I'm standing there kind of weaving around, trying to get my bearings. And I look over, and there's old Jerry with his thumbs hooked behind his overalls. And he's going. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, he just goes, you going to be all right? 
And I said, oh, I think so. And he just fell apart laughing. <laughs> but then I, I got my revenge on him because Jerry had a herd of 35 beautiful Holstein milk cows. And they were the love of his life and the pride of his operation. And um, unfortunately, there came a day when his very best milk cow took ill. It was clear she was not going to get any better. And furthermore, she was now in a bunch, a, a lot of pain. And so he did what you do in those days. He called my brother and he said, can you come over, bring your deer rifle and put this cow out of her misery. And so my brother comes over and with his deer rifle and he walks up into the manger and he dispatches the cow. And now, of course, you have to remove the dead cow from the stanchion and the barn. And so my brother gets a tractor and he, he, he backs it up to the barn door and he hooks a cable to the back of the tractor and then he runs it to the cow and he gets a, takes a hitch around one of the cow's hind legs. And then he gets back on the trailer or the tractor and very slowly, trying honestly to be respectful, he just very slowly starts dragging this cow out of the stanchion. Meanwhile, poor Jerry is standing there, thumbs behind his overalls, looking down at his very best milk cow as it is being dragged lifeless from the stanchion. What Jerry doesn't notice is that the cable has pulled the cow's one hind leg that way. The other hind leg has got hung up in the stanchion. And it's being bent back like the arm on a giant catapult. And when the hoof cleared the stanchion, it whipped around and smashed him right in the kneecap. <laughs> so now he's bouncing around on one leg, tears streaming down his face. And my brother stops the tractor and he says, you going to be all right? <laughs> And Jerry says, I think so. <laughs> and my brother says, because I got one more shell. <laughs> and I've told that story for 15 years. And about 10 years into telling it, I told it in front of my brother, who was there. He went down a list when I got done. He's like, well, the cow didn't kick him in the knee. It kicked him in the ankle. Uh, it wasn't a 30 out 6 It was a 308. <laughs> it, you know, it wasn't your brother, it was me. So what was fascinating about that is we both agree the story happened, we both agree a dead cow kicked a guy, it's a funny story, it's a true story, but little details sometimes slip and slide. I really, truly, I want you to know that if I'm telling you a story that's funny, it really happened and it was real people. I'm one of those coffee snobs you've heard about. Uh, I don't mind admitting it. That said, when you're on the road, any coffee will do, including bad gas station coffee or bad truck stop coffee. But one of the beautiful things about the last 20 years being on the road is that even certain gas station coffee is pretty dang good at this point. I'll tell you what, I do have some rules about coffee and uh, not everyone's gonna agree with me here. Uh, number one, it's coffee. Don't put anything in it. I don't wanna hear about, do you want room for cream? <laughs> Are you weak of character? I don't. No, I want it dark black and unmitigated. I don't like travel mugs. I don't like drinking out of a tiny little hole. And I also don't like drinking anything out of plastic. So what I do is I get a Basically, a paper cup is fine. That, that does not sully the taste or interfere with the aroma or the aesthetic experience. But I don't want to drink it through the cap. So, of course, what I do is I remove the cap as soon as possible. And then I just drink it straight, which is why, and I'm going to ask you not to actually film this, the entire base of my van is covered with coffee stains. Because, of course, I invariably spill it. Honestly, man, uh, a lot of times I'm just the stenographer. Man, I, am, I don't come up with this stuff, I just relate it. One of my very favorite stories about them is, uh, so my one brother, we was all, I don't know the number exactly, I'll get it wrong, but let's just say b before the first one of us three brothers got married, we had accumulated 102 years of shared bachelorhood. And um, my middle brother, we, we were, 
figured he'd never get married because as far as we knew, he hadn't been on a date. Plus, he lived in a tiny little one-room log cabin that he built himself. When I say tiny, I'm not just speaking euphemistically. If you step through the front door, immediately to your left is a homemade wooden table. Uh, if you then proceed in a clockwise manner around the complex, it's a homemade wooden table, stove, sink, refrigerator, hot water heater, wood stove, chest of drawers, washer, dryer, bathtub. Sleeps in a little area up above the purlins. Um, you'll notice from what I said, he has running water and electricity. However, the bathroom was located in a separate facility about 40 yards out in the brush. <laughs> the other thing you should know about him is that his only vehicle at the time was a dump truck. If you invite him over to put a culvert in your driveway, he will show up in his dump truck. If you invite him over to play canasta and have hors d'oeuvres, he will show up in his dump truck. <laughs> so here he is, living in a one-room log cabin with no indoor toilet, and his only vehicle is a dump truck, and yet somehow he has failed to hook up on the local dating scene. <laughs> And then one day out of the blue, I get a call from my mom, and she says, we think your brother has a girlfriend. And I said, well, how can this be? <laughs> because to me, this is like waking up one day and finding a fifth face on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> and she says, well, as it turns out, she has her own dump truck. <laughs> so now... It, my brothers and I mentioned being Scandinavian Stoics. We don't talk a lot about our feelings with each other. If there's trouble, we are there for each other, and we have proven that more than once. But day to day, we stay out of each other's business. And same with when, so he, he does indeed, he starts dating this woman, and I don't ask any questions, none of my business. Met her a couple times, lovely lady, beautiful dump truck. <laughs> um, But none of my business. And then one day, I have to borrow a log chain. So I, I drive out to my brother's place out there in the country. I go up the little path through to Jack Pines to the one-room log cabin. And I find him down on his hands and knees. He's pouring footings for a tiny little addition. And I said, what are you doing? And he says, oh, putting in a bathroom. <laughs> and I thought, oh, ho. But still, none of my business, so I don't ask. But sure enough, a couple months later, they announce that they are engaged to be married. And it turns out that she has agreed to marry him. She's agreed to move into this tiny little log cabin. Um, but first, he must install an indoor toilet. Now, as the brother who had been in many relationships up to that point, all of them train wrecks, I took him aside and said, well, you see, this is how it starts. <laughs> First, she wants an indoor toilet. <laughs> Where does it end? <laughs> but anyways, they basically, she told him, I'll marry you, but you got to put the toilet in first. They got married uh, at 10 AM on Saturday morning. He finishes putting in the toilet at 4 PM on Friday. He calls her to tell her, basically, the toilet is in, the wedding is on. <laughs> She's not home. He gets her answering service. He leaves her a message, as only my brother can. And he says, uh, yeah, I got a message for you. <laughs> he left her the ceremonial first flush. <laughs> I learned from my father. My father was a farmer, but he also logged, and he had sheep. And so he had the milk check, he had the logging check. If it was a decent year, you made just enough off the sheep and the wool and the lambs to pay the property taxes. Well, your big wig corporate types would refer to this as multiple income streams. I realized that while my book career has turned into more than I ever anticipated, I also knew that it would be pretty tough to make a living just on book royalties, and I quit, as a matter of fact. And so I just kept expanding it into performing, telling stories, speaking, even starting a band. 
but none of it happens if I don't sit down at the desk every day and create new material to be a writer. At the earliest edges of my memory, my father is plowing and I'm running behind him. I see my feet going pat, pat, pat over the soil. I see my father, left hand on the wheel, right forearm braced against the fender, head turning back to check the depth of the plow, then forward to gauge his progress. The soil is red and sandy in the high spots and dark and loamy in the low spots where it curls from the plowshares like strips of licorice, leaving me this square, shin-deep trough in which to travel. I trail the sound of the little tractor. So close to ground, I can hear the soft plop of the overturned clods. Now and then, the plow slices the soil so cleanly that a chubby white grub drops into the furrow unscathed. The grubs are translucent white, their black guts dimly visible as if through rice paper. Grackles and cowbirds flock the plow, pecking through the new turned dirt. The grub will not last long. There is my father on his underpowered Ford Ferguson, and there is me trotting right behind him, and there is God above, looking down as I run the straight groove of the furrow my life laid out on a line drawn in the earth. That's from the book Coop. That's one of the most important paragraphs to me that I've ever written because it's such a privilege to A, have been raised by a loving father, a stern and strict uh, father who had principles and expected you to live up to them but was always loving and always fair. And, and I watched him work so hard. And yet, I could see the beauty in that work. And that story I tell about running behind him as he plows, you know, he's literally creating a line in the earth for me to follow. The metaphors are just overflowing. And it's evocative to me and I think to a lot of other people. From the ridiculous to the sublime, we are on the road with Michael Perry. Michael Perry is here in the studio, and this is a challenge break. It is the pledge drive here at Wisconsin, at uh, PBS Wisconsin, and we're asking for your support. We have a special uh, encouragement for you right now. Previous uh, existing members would like to encourage you to join them. If you are new, if you've never been a member to PBS Wisconsin, uh, we'd like to hear from you because your dollars will be doubled right now during this break, and we are looking for a total of 40 calls. And then you make your call at 800-236-3636. And Michael, that was funny stories about your brother and getting engaged and... Uh... You know what, people are gonna think I'm making this up. I literally just got off the phone from apologizing <laughs> to my brother. I was like, oh, I'm telling stories about you on TV. <laughs> I'm sure we'll discuss it later, next to the log skitter. So, <laughs> well, and then followed by that beautiful um, story, uh, mm. the intro. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute because that's one of the gifts. Mm. The number to call is eight hundred two three six three six three six. Thanks, Stephanie. You know, we are so grateful here at PBS Wisconsin and Wisconsin Public Media to have such a long-lasting relationship with uh, Michael and his work. You might have gotten to know Michael through the Clodhopper reports. You might have first uh, heard Population 485 on Chapter a Day on Wisconsin Public Radio, or you might be tuning in for the first time tonight and getting to know what a treasure he is for Wisconsin and the stories that he shares. Uh, regardless of how you've come across Michael's work, won't you call right now and pledge your support for this type of great storytelling on PBS Wisconsin. It's just a great relationship and we're so proud to be part of it. 1-800-236-3636 is the number to call. When you do, you'll be helping us reach the challenge that Stephanie told us about. And we have a number of great thank you gifts, including getting the DVD of the program you're watching tonight. Uh, that's at the $10 monthly sustainer level. At the $15 monthly sustainer level, we will send you two of Michael's uh, wonderful books, Roughneck Grace and Coop, and he will be personally 
hand signing them for you uh, before we send them along to you. And at the $25 level, we will send you the two books and we will send you all three of Michael's PBS Wisconsin uh, specials on DVD, including the program that you're watching tonight, Michael Perry on the Road. We've got more of that great show coming, but to keep bringing these great shows to you, we need your support and there's no better time to do it than right now when your gift can be doubled. 1-800-236-3636. Well, thank you so much, Eric. We're well on our way with this challenge break. It looks like we have at least 12, no, 14 people that have called and to show their support here during this break. So it's a perfect time if you've been watching uh, the, this wonderful show and you, you say, that's something that I want to see continue on, on PBS Wisconsin. Now is the time for you to go to those phones and make, make your pledge of support. You know, this, this show is a perfect example of, of how things work here. We're able to continue to bring you uh, specials by Michael Perry. And remember, this is our third show that we've uh, produced here at PBS Wisconsin. But we're able to do that because of you, people that step forward and say, I love, I love to see Michael Perry on PBS Wisconsin. And think of all the other programs that are here on PBS Wisconsin. It's because of people like you that we're able to continue to bring those. So that's why your, your support this evening is so important to us here. Don't forget we have many thank you gifts that we can send your way. You can become a sustaining member, uh, which is a great way to, to make your membership uh, donation here at PBS Wisconsin. So we've made it as easy as possible for you to join us, but now we need you to go to those phones and dial 1-800-236-3636. And don't forget, this is a challenge break. We are already halfway there. We're looking for 40 calls. And if you've never been a member, which means that you help support PBS Wisconsin financially, it feels really good and your dollars will be doubled right now during this break at 800-236-3636. Well, Michael, when we left off, we were about to talk about the prologue to Coop. That's the mm -hmm. one that you were reading at the end of that last segment. And this is one of the two books that are available for a pledge of $15 a month. But boy, what a metaphor for things. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I had that piece half written for years and I polished it and worked on it and I never really found a place for it. And then this book, Coop, or as the very first radio interviewer who ever talked to me about the book called it Co-op, <laughs> <laughs> Should have seen that coming, didn't? Um, but as the book evolved, I realized it was an unconscious, perhaps, tribute to my father. And so the opening paragraph is just about me running behind him while he plows, and that is a, a signal memory for me. And as far away as my hands are from being a farmer, um, that dead furrow that I was following is a line I still follow. Hmm. Well, I've been reading your books for a long time. You're just a beautiful writer and you speak to the heart and you connect with viewers in Wisconsin. You connect with residents from farmers to, you know, triple PhDs and every uh, people from all walks of life. It's, uh, it's really special. Well, I think, um, I, I think about performing in those opera houses. I think that you can enjoy the opera house and you can enjoy the dirt track stock car races in the same weekend. Why not? <laughs> Why not is right. Please join us at 800-236-3636. Thanks, Stephanie and Michael. And when you do call right now, we've got those great thank you gifts. And you get the thank you gift and your gift is doubled right now during this challenge. We're at 29. We're trying to reach 40. We got, uh, we've got time to go and we know that you're waiting out there to call. So won't you call 1-800. 236-3636, help us meet that challenge. And when you do, uh, at the $10 monthly sustaining uh, level, we've got the DVD of tonight's program, Michael Perry on the Road, that we'll love to send to you to enjoy over and over again or share with someone in your life who you know would enjoy these stories, maybe someone that you recognize in some of the stories that Michael's sharing. Um, at the $15 level, we've got uh, two of Michael's books, Coop and Roughneck Grace, that we will send to you, signed copies uh, from Michael. Um, and then at the $25 level, we will send you both of the autographed books and we will send you all three of uh, Michael's PBS Wisconsin specials on DVD for you to enjoy. So if you, this is the first time that you are seeing one of his specials tonight, um, what a great way to support PBS Wisconsin, great programs like this, and to be able to see the other programs that we've enjoyed, which are filled with many more wonderful stories as well um, as he travels the state and shares um, his own insights and, and, and thoughts and, and recollections of life in Wisconsin. So won't you call right now, pledge your support. We're seven away from our goal. Let's see if we can get there and go past that. 1-800-236-3636. 
Well, and when you call and become a member this evening, our volunteers can go through all of those fantastic uh, uh, thank you gifts that we have. We know we, there's a lot there to, to pick and choose from. No matter what level you pick will be absolutely perfect for us here at PBS Wisconsin. We value you so, your support so much. You know, and it's wonderful now because there are so many different ways that you can access all of the quality programming on PBS Wisconsin. You can, if you maybe you watch us over the air or through your cable. If you're somebody that likes to stream programs, you should be sure to check out the PBS app. It's a great way for you to download that free app and get access to all of the wonderful programs on, on PBS. Uh, and don't forget, we also have Passport. That's another outstanding benefit if you're a member of PBS Wisconsin. In fact, if you join us the, this evening at any of the suggested levels, you'll become a, a member of Passport. And it's a great additional library. It's a great way to take a deep dive into some of your favorite programs and maybe programs you haven't even discovered yet. So we have many benefits of becoming a member of PBS Wisconsin, but it all starts when you give us a call at 1-800-236-3636. We're gonna go back to the program shortly. We're in the middle of a challenge break. Oh, we've hit 40. That's just fantastic. Thank nice you job. so much. Well done. Uh, please join us at 800-236-3636. Michael Perry is here in the studio. And uh, you were talking about how your father as a farmer had to have multiple streams of income. And you have adopted the same model. Yes. And uh, one of your streams is as a musician. You play and, you know, I remember hosting, when I was hosting Simply Folk, I aired your music on that mm -hmm. program. And uh, so you are just a renaissance person, but it must keep you pretty busy. Pretty busy, and uh, you know, with the music, I'm very respectful of the fact that I learned uh, three chords and two rhythms. I know just enough to be dangerous, uh, and I work with wonderful musicians around me on stage. But yeah, I have a band called The Long Beds, and this would be a perfect time to mention that uh, just two days ago, the guy who first took me on the road and, and convinced me to play my songs in public, uh, this goes out to Billy, because Billy passed on two days ago, and. Uh, I wouldn't be singing if it wasn't for him. Mm. Yeah, Such a wonderful inspiration. And there is um, a link in the DVD to information and um, performances by the Long Bed. So when you pledge for the program DVD, you can have more information about that. Hear the music, well, you'll, you'll have a link to find more information about it. That's available for a pledge of $10 a month or more at 800-236-3636. Thank you, Stephanie. That's right. When you call 1-800-236-3636 and give at the uh, $10 monthly uh, sustaining level, right now you will receive the DVD. Um, the DVD is the program you're watching tonight. There's also four additional stories that you're not going to see tonight, two from each of the theaters in Menominee and Stoughton. Um, so great bonus materials there. And as Stephanie mentioned, there's also a link on there to be able to watch Michael and the Long Bed's 30-minute music hour performance um, that they did, uh, not in this studio, but the one just down the hallway a few years back. Uh, wonderful performance. Uh, great way to get the full array of, of uh, Michael's work. Um, at the $15 level, we will send you the two books. Coop and Roughneck Grace, personally autographed by Michael, um, and that is at the $15 monthly sustaining level. And at the $25 monthly sustaining level, we will send you the what I'm calling the complete Michael Perry package. You get the two books, you get all three of his PBS Wisconsin specials, the one you're watching tonight, and the two additional programs that we've previously aired. Uh, and, and you also get the uh, great personal feeling of knowing that you're supporting great programs like this, programs that feature Michael, programs that pe feature storytellers like Jerry Apps, independent documentaries, Wisconsin film, journalism, and of course the kids programs that have raised so many of us and all of our family. So call right now, pledge your support, 1-800-236-3636. You know, Eric was just talking about some of the, the great programs that you can support and how it's such a wide-ranging amount of, of programming that you can support. And, you know, it really is a group, group effort uh, that keeps us on the air here at PBS Wisconsin. Over 70,000 families help support PBS Wisconsin every year. 70,000 families. That's and, you know, no one person can sit down and write out the check for everything. It would be wonderful if they could, but that's not the way that things actually work here. We, we depend on every single donation, no matter what size it is. Maybe it's at one of our suggested levels that we have this evening. Maybe, maybe you can't, can't make that work, but there's something else that you can do. 
that's absolutely fine. Every donation is so important to helping us, to helping keeping us able to do all of the work that we want to do and that we, we know that our viewers love here at PBS Wisconsin. So please join the people that have already become members by going to the phone and dialing 1-800-236-3636. We're in the middle of a challenge break. We're going to go back to the show in just a moment. Uh, but right now, if you have never been a member of PBS Wisconsin and you're thinking, like, I love this show, I, I'd love to help make this kind of thing available for everyone, this is the time because your dollars will be matched one-to-one -one during this break. And we would love to hear from you. We'd love to welcome you at 800-236-3636. It feels really good to support PBS Wisconsin. Every time you turn it on or use the app, you know that you're helping to make it happen. And you're helping to make these kind of productions available. You've been working with PBS Wisconsin for 20 years. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, I mentioned my friend Billy, and I just went back and looked, and there was an early Clodhopper report where I walked through a cemetery. He carved headstones, and uh, that I just put that up on my website at sneezingcow.com the other day. Yeah, oh, that's and that was early, early PBS. The Clodhopper report, right? If yeah, you've been that's, watching those, that's and what it was. Yeah, thirty-minute music hour and uh, all the other programs on PBS Wisconsin that are done right here in Wisconsin for Wisconsinites and, of course, our friends and family elsewhere. Um, but you make it happen at 800-236-3636. And we're grateful. Just your gift is the only one we're looking for. Thanks, Stephanie. That's right. And, you know, we asked for 40 people to call when we started out. Um, and no one in this uh, room right now is surprised that you guys have knocked that out of the park. But we still want to hear from even more. Let's see how much support we can get for this program and this type of programming on PBS Wisconsin uh, tonight. If you are most comfortable calling, the number, of course, is 1-800-236-3636. Of course, any gift that's given uh, online right now during this break as well at pbswisconsin.org. Or if you're someone who's got a smartphone that you can take out and hit that QR code that's up on the screen right now and give a, your gift online, also works with the challenge right now and doubling your gift as a new member to pbswisconsin.org. And it, it's the best. You get, you get a thank you gift as well. At the $10 monthly sustaining level, we will send you uh, the program DVD that you're watching tonight with the bonus stories and footage that you're not going to see this evening. At the $15 monthly level, we will send you the two books, Coop and Roughneck Grace, personally autographed by Michael and then sent your way to add to your personal library. And at the $25 level, we'll send you the two books, and the three DVDs, um, all three of the Michael Perry specials that we've produced here at PBS Wisconsin. We're so grateful for your support, whether by phone or online, it doesn't matter. We're just glad that you're helping to support great quality program for everybody in Wisconsin on PBS Wisconsin. 1-800-236-3636. Well, thank you, Eric. We're going to be going back to the show in just a, uh, a minute or two, and you don't want to miss the, this last segment of, of the show. Michael's got plenty of, of wonderful stories for us to hear yet. Um, but before you go, why, now's the perfect time for you to join. Join us as a member of PBS Wisconsin. Again, Eric talked about how easy it is. There's all these different platforms that you can use to join us. And one thing you might want to consider when you, when you join is becoming a sustaining member. That's how I do my membership, and I love it. I, I select the amount that I want to donate every month, and then I basically sit back and know that I have my membership every month. I'm helping to keep PPS Wisconsin on the air. I can increase my, member, my, my sustaining uh, donation if I would like to do that. Um, I can make any changes that I need to, so it's a fantastic way for you to show your support for us here at PBS Wisconsin. It's one thing that you can consider when you call the number on your screen and talk to one of our volunteers. Again, that number is 1-800-236-3636. One of the things that's been consistent through your work, Michael, is gratitude. Mm -hmm. That one's pretty easy. Um, grew up on a, in a lovely family on a farm in northern Wisconsin, worked on a ranch in Wyoming for five years, went to nursing school, got a nursing degree, and then one day accidentally wandered off into writing. Never anticipated any of this, and I'm just grateful for every bit of it. And none of it happens without readers and people showing up, and I never forget that. Yeah, we don't either. We are grateful for each and every gift. We're in the middle of a challenge break. Actually, we're going to go back to the program in just a few seconds. But please take the time, especially if you've never been a member, to make your gift. Get your dollars, dollars 
doubled. And uh, we've got some thank you gifts for you, nice ways to show our gratitude and our appreciation for your membership and your contributions. You make this kind of programming happen. We're going to go back to the program, get ready for some smiles, 800-236-3636. I, I talk sometimes about, you know, how we're working hard and I got a kid in college and a kid in braces and, but I don't want to pretend that things are, I mean, we're doing fine. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you saw the van out there tonight, um, we're up to having, we got two out of four hubcaps. So <laughs> I feel like we're really gaining. Um, <laughs> plus what I like about having two hubcaps, I, I mount them both on the same side. Because that way, depending on the sort of image I'm trying to project, <laughs> if I'm feeling fancy, I might give you some hubcaps. <laughs> this wall is along the stairs that lead up to the stage. And after you perform here, you are allowed to sign the wall. Well, I recognize Stephen Wright. He's a comedian. Uh, off the sight line, I can see Jillian Welch signed the wall in 2012. I see Nancy Griffith, who was a singer-songwriter that meant so much to me, especially in my early days when I was first doing a lot of writing. I would listen to her music over and over. And then, if you scan around, oh, Michael Perry. I'm only ever Michael on my books when I sign the wall or when I'm in trouble with my mom. A buddy of mine named Billy, who was in, in my band for years and years, told me one time, he goes, no matter where you're playing, no matter what the show is, you're creating a moment for people that just exists in time and it echoes long after you're done with it. And that's what I think of when I see all these names, is just that the echoes of all these performances are still bouncing around in here, out in the world, and that's what you're hoping for when you get up on that stage. Create some echoes that last. I have two daughters, and uh, so I, I met my wife. She was a single mom, and um, she had a three-year-old daughter. And I've said before that I, I don't care for the term stepdaughter. I don't find it offensive. You won't hurt my feelings if you use it. Uh, but I, what I've always said about the term stepdaughter is that that word is perfectly sufficient in conveying the situation. It is utterly insufficient in conveying the heart. And I was given the beautiful gift of a wonderful word by a roughneck, backwoods-dwelling Vietnam vet poet friend of mine when he said one day, she's not your stepdaughter, she is your given daughter. And I think that's a lovely way of putting it, and that is how I feel about her. <laughs> that said, she's dangerous. Um, <laughs> We had a family meeting a little while ago. Uh, my wife calls family meetings. I try, I, I really, I'm the last one there. I come dragging in even after the kids. I really don't want to go to the family meeting. Uh, and there's always an agenda and stuff. And we had a family meeting. This is when my elder daughter was in her teens. She had her driver's license. She was driving already to work and to school and to volleyball practice. And one of the things on the list that my wife brought up is she said, we need to do a better job of eating leftovers. Too many leftovers are just staying in the fridge and that's wasteful and we're not that kind of family and we need to make a better effort to eat leftovers. So the very next day, I was working in my little office above the garage there and it was lunchtime and uh, I was pretty hungry. I hadn't had breakfast. So I went in the house, like leftovers, gonna do the right thing, open the fridge, Started pulling out a few leftovers, and then I saw in there, one of the leftovers was one of those little square plastic sandwich containers, and there was a sandwich in it. And I opened it up, it's a neatly made sandwich, it's even cut, you know, the two triangles. I thought, hmm, must have been something that, you know, the kid made for school and didn't remember to take it, so I'll eat that. So I go out to my office and eat my lunch in my old green chair. Uh, it's the best place to eat lunch because as soon as you're done, you just set the dish down and fall asleep. Um, <laughs> But I mean, I start that sandwich, and something seemed a little off. The bread was damp, not moist, damp. And then it didn't really taste like I expected. It didn't taste rotten or bad or anything. It just kind of tasted not what I expected. And 
And I even peeled the bread back and looked, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, the meat looked a little gray, but I was really hungry, so I just kept eating. Well, later that afternoon, my wife comes home, and I'm in the kitchen, and of course, like all men who barely hit the bar of doing what they should have done in the first place, but still expecting a gold star, <laughs> I said to my wife, I said, I ate leftovers for lunch, and she's like, oh, good, and I said, that sandwich, um, tasted kind of funny. Who, what, what kind of meat was that? She said, you didn't eat that. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I did. It was in there with all the other leftovers. She said, oh, she goes, your daughter, the teenager, brought that home from school the other day, didn't eat it, left it out on the counter, and it's been there for two days, and I only put it in the fridge so that I'd be reminded to tell her we don't waste food in this family. So now I'm sort of going, oh, <laughs> hmm. So for the next couple hours, I'm just kind of waiting, but nothing really happens. <laughs> Later that evening, my teenager comes home, and I go, now it's time for me to be dad. It's time to deliver a sermon. So we're standing in the kitchen. She's standing at the door. I'm standing by the sink, and I said, I just wanted to let you know that um, mom wants to talk to you about that <laughs> sandwich. You left that out on the counter for two days, so then it's kind of spoiled. I said, and I could see her turn white, and I thought, well, this is good. My sermon's having the desired effect. And she just went, you ate that? <laughs> and I said, yeah. She said, Dad, that's been in my car for two months. <laughs> So sometimes I just got to explain to them, people in New York, that things aren't so smooth out here. Uh, but I also like to educate them. I like one of my favorite phrases is I occasionally have to remind those folks out there that out here in the Midwest, sometimes we think things up all by ourselves. <laughs> They're kind. They mean, they've changed my life. They're hardworking folks. The people I've worked with are great. But again, just occasionally you got to set them straight. One of my favorite stories about that is most of my book tours, it's just me in that van. And, uh, but occasionally, if I do a, a book tour with one of the bigger publishers and it's a national tour, they actually fly me around the country. And it's great. They do a great, it's, Im it's impossibly difficult to put together the logistics of a book tour. And I'm grateful to them for that. That said, twice, two different publicists, two different book tours, I've had the exact same experience and the exact same quote. They call me up and they say, well, Mr. Perry, we have your book tour all organized. It's all ready to go. Your flight leaves Milwaukee at 10 a.m. on Tuesday morning. And I say, well, hold it right there. Go ahead and make your hand into a map of Wisconsin. <laughs> Don't forget Door County. This right here, this, this, this is the New Auburn slash Fall Creek area. Drive five, five and a half hours, depending on traffic, Milwaukee Airport. Go on back up to the New Auburn slash Fall Creek area. Drive an hour and a half due west, Minneapolis, St. Paul. They have an airport there with airplanes that go all over the world. And twice, I've gotten the exact same comment from two different publicists. There's this little pause, and then they said, but, but you live in Wisconsin. <laughs> and I say, yeah, and we have an open border agreement with Minnesota. <laughs> I've been able to say this almost since the age of 25. If I get hit by a truck, Tonight, when I step out the back door, I won. I can't believe what I've been allowed to do and experience and create, what I've had the freedom to do. It's overwhelming when I think of it. When I look back at the hundreds of stories I've been allowed to write, thousands of people I've been allowed to meet, the places I've traveled, the behind the scenes things that I've been privy to, I grew up cleaning calf pens in the town of Sampson in Chippewa County, Wisconsin. If it ended today, I, that's important, you know, and so if it does end today, make sure you tell them. It's all right. It was a good run, man. This is a cold-based story, and 
Of course, we love the cold here. We like to complain about it, but we love the cold because it feeds that most Midwestern of traits, stoic martyrdom. <laughs> it's like grandma with her arthritis, like, oh, no, no, I'm fine. Don't, don't worry about me, you know, but, but worry about me. <laughs> and we're the same with the cold. We love to complain about it. But, you know, there's a lot of folks moving in the area now, and I have to, uh, when I have opportunity, I educate them, especially if they're not from a warm area. If you're gonna brag about the cold, which we all do around here, I said, there's a dance to it, and you gotta know the dance. I said, if you walk into the cafe one morning and your neighbor says, hey, how cold is it out by you? Sounds like he cares, doesn't, that's a trap. <laughs> Never go first. Because you're going to say, oh, it's 15 below. And he's going to say, oh, yeah, 17 below out by us. <laughs> and of course, uh, it's on the milk house thermometer, it always reads a couple degrees high. <laughs> I tell people who aren't from this area that when summer ends, we don't take our beach towels and fold them up and put them away in the closet. We roll them up and put them down there along the bottom of the kitchen door. <laughs> you must live in the same house I do. <laughs> I, uh, I also take some, uh, one of them that's left over and I roll that up and I put it on the windowsill right above the head of the bed where that draft comes through and <laughs> kind of catches you on the bald spot. And... Uh, it's hard to keep a rolled up towel balanced on a windowsill, but by January, it's just froze right to the glass <laughs> and you're pretty much good to go till spring. You just see things differently if you understand cold. For instance, where I'm from up north there, if we see a guy drinking every can of lineys in a 24 pack, we don't see a guy with a drinking problem. We see a guy who's going to take that empty carton, stomp it flat, and then zip tie it to the grill of his pickup truck. <laughs> That's just heater enhancement is what that is right there. Which also reminds me, all this excitement about electric cars. Like, yeah, I see your Tesla there, Spanky. But we've been plugging in our car since about 1952, so... Some of the friends that I have from warmer climates, I worry about them, you know, what if they wind up here in the winter? We could lose them. And <laughs> so I try to give them helpful advice. I give them the one, and you'll excuse me, this is a little bit crude, this is as crude as I'll get, but I teach them the old chestnut, you know, don't eat yellow snow. Everybody knows that one. Um, but I tell them, but uh, uh, don't eat the green snow, neither. Um, Cause uh, <clears throat> that's antifreeze. And, <laughs> That'll kill you. <laughs> They'll find you several hours later, dead in a snowbank. You'll be dead but flexible. <laughs> That's a conceptual joke, and I'm unduly proud of it. <laughs> Don't eat the maroon snow, neither, because that is hydraulic fluid, and that stuff just shoots right through you. <laughs> um. Folks, I'm so grateful that you came out tonight. I got one more story I'll tell, and then we'll, we'll go ahead out. Just grateful for you being here. I think I needed a laugh as much as anybody. And so thank you for letting me have one with a whole living room full of friends. Um, I take none of this for granted. It's all very odd and asymmetrical and unplanned, but here we are. You know, I, I, I joke today about my brothers and all their talents, but I mean that. That's my background. My background is blue collar. And I'm so grateful that I get up in the morning and the first thing I want to do is write. And I've somehow found a way to make a living writing. And I would hope to be doing that when I tip over. Uh, but I'm also glad that my background is just boots on the ground. I think we're all going to fall eventually, and I like to fall from a very low height. Um, <laughs> So thank you so much for coming out tonight. I have a website and social media platforms and all that. And if you just go to, I'm old enough that I say the www. <laughs> dot sneezingcow.com. 
which of course never stand behind a sneezing cow, don't have to explain that to this crowd. Um, but when I'm out there on the West Coast, you know, sometimes I gotta break out charts and everything. <laughs> I just tell them basically it's a situation involving several of the properties of physics, like contents under pressure, uh, ballistics, and the path of least resistance, and of course inertia, although in this case you might refer to it as minertia. I don't know if it's ever happened to you. It has happened to me growing up on the farm. It is a jaw-dropping experience. <laughs> although that would not be your best move. Um, Thanks so much, thanks for coming out. A special thank you to the folks running the cameras. People got here early to set up sound. There are folks working in the soundboard. There's a whole bunch of people who came here long before I did tonight to make it so that all I had to do was show up and be fabulous. So <laughs> thank you so much. It's like putting on a pair of old jeans to come back to Wisconsin. I also think of it in terms of how I feel about my hometown of New Auburn. I always say no matter where I'm standing when I say it, I am forever grateful to be of and from New Auburn, Wisconsin. So none of us knows what the future holds. I have relatives in Panama, I love it in Panama. Maybe I'll move to Panama, I don't know but I will always be of and from Wisconsin, and even more specifically, New Auburn, Wisconsin. I'm Stephanie Elkins, and what a great evening we've been spending with Michael Perry. And there are still a few more stories, so stay with us. And um, we have the entire program for you on DVD with a couple of, actually not a couple, four additional stories. Can you tell us a little bit about the additional stories that are on the DVD? I don't have a clue. I'm really excited <laughs> to see them. Uh, <laughs> I do, I do want to just point out, I don't know if, it's gonna, if this will glare too much, but um, I, I love the cover of this CD and I think you'll like it too because I'm wearing a, a cap so you won't have to deal with this blinding shine when you get the actual <laughs> DVD. This is the third PBS Wisconsin production uh, that Michael Perry has done with us. And it's possible because of your support. And we're asking for you, just you, to make your gift in an amount that is right for you at 800-236-3636 and um, enjoy this DVD over and over again. We, there are also some other wonderful thank you gifts, but uh, oh, just great storytelling. And we'll talk about that in, in just a minute. But first, 800-236-3636. Thanks, Stephanie and Michael, and thank you for tuning in tonight. As Stephanie mentioned, don't go anywhere. First, call in your support, 1-800-236-3636 to support the great programming in PBS Wisconsin. And second, stick around, because there's still more from the Michael Perry on the Road special to come uh, when we're done here. But when you do call, we've got these great thank you gifts starting at the $10 monthly sustaining level. We have the Michael Perry on the Road DVD. It's the program you watch tonight. It's four additional stories, two from each of the venues that we recorded uh, Michael in and a number of other uh, bonus uh, treats to find on this DVD. Um, a wonderful way to enjoy this show if you tuned in late and you wanted to to catch the whole thing or you just know that perfect person in your family that you want to share it with while supporting PBS Wisconsin and sharing that with everybody across the state. That's at the $10 monthly giving level. At the $15 level, of course, everybody loves Michael's books, um, and we are thrilled to be able to send you two of them, Coop and Roughneck Grace, and not only two books, but two books personally autographed by Michael uh, before we send them to you. That's at the $15 monthly sustaining level. And at the $25 monthly sustainer level, we will send you both of the books and we will send you three DVDs, Michael Perry on the Road and the two additional uh, Michael Perry specials that we've previously aired here on PBS Wisconsin. So won't you call right now, pledge your support, 1-800-236-3636. 
Well, thank you, Eric. That that last um, package that Eric was talking about, if you're a Michael Perry fan, that's definitely something that you're going to want to think about, about uh, getting this evening. Um, and thank you to all of you that have already become members of PBS Wisconsin. It's because of you that we're able to continue to bring specials like Michael's third uh, special here on PBS Wisconsin. And um, I've heard a rumor that we're already starting to think about a, a fourth one. So if that's something that you would like to continue to see, now is the perfect time for you to show your support for PBS Wisconsin. And when you join us this evening, you might want to consider becoming a sustaining member. It's a great way to, to, to make your, put your, your membership on, on just easy, easy, easy. Um, you call in, you, you say how much you would like to, to donate every month, and then that's it. If you want to change your membership at any point, you can. If you want to increase it or, or whatever, you can do that. But it's a very easy way for you to become a member and show your support uh, for us here at PBS Wisconsin. And when you do that, we also have these suggested levels that you can join us at with all of those wonderful thank you gifts. Um, so we have a lot of benefits of becoming a member of PBS Wisconsin, but we need your support. Shows like the special that we've just watched with Michael Perry are, are done with one donation at a time. That's how we get all of the money together to be able to continue to, to bring great shows like this to you. So it all starts when you go to that phone and dial 1-800-236-3636. One of the things that strikes me, Michael, watching this special is that sense of community that shines through with your work, not just the work that you write, but you create, you foster this wonderful sense of community on stage. Do you have uh, folks that come over and over to see your shows? I wouldn't be surprised if you do. Yeah, there's definitely a few repeat customers. <laughs> and I think, I think about that a lot. I just did a show the other night at a venue, well, at the Stoughton Opera House. And I did about half brand new material and half uh, old, well-polished stories. And, for a while, I was concerned about telling the same stories, but I've learned that people, they love the flow of the story, they love the discovery, and the really amazing part for me, or the gratitude part for me, is I still love telling them. I love taking that adventure with an audience. You can hear that half the audience is hearing it for the first time, and half the audience is just reliving it with me. Well, and reliving it with you is what uh, viewers can do when they make a a uh, gift and ask for the DVD for a gift of $10 a month or more because it is that sense of community where Wisconsinites and we relate. Many of us come from farming backgrounds or we relate on so many different levels to your stories. And you can enjoy that over and over again with your gift at 800-236-3636. Thank you. And that's right. You can call that number 1-800-236-3636. Pledge your support. You can go online pbswisconsin.org uh, and make your gift there. Or if you're someone who's sitting there with your uh, smartphone in your hand, try, try scanning that QR code. It'll take you right there. You don't even need to plug anything in. We're making it as easy as possible to support PBS Wisconsin tonight and support great programs like Michael Perry on the road. And when you do, um, at the $10 monthly sustaining level, we'll send you the DVD of tonight's program. It's the full program along with four additional stories. And you don't need a surprise anymore. I just got the titles of the four stories. They're Farmer Snort, Beer Tent, Grandma Perry, and Cigarettes. So there you go. So I'm sure that uh, that will whet your, uh, your interest in wanting to get that DVD so you can hear even more of Michael and hear what the, the stories behind those titles um, at the $10 monthly sustaining level. At the $15 level, we will send you two of Michael's books, Coop and Roughneck Grace, personally autographed by Michael before we send them along your way uh, to add to your personal library. Or if you already have these books, what wonderful gifts to, uh, to give to someone important in your life. And at the $25 monthly sustaining level, we'll send you the full, complete Michael Perry package. You get the two autographed books. You get the three DVDs of all of the programs that Michael has supported. And of course, every one of the levels that we've suggested tonight in any gift of $35 or more a, a year um, gets you Airwaves, our program guide in the mail every month. And if you don't get this, and you had, you'd have known this was on tonight if you're just stumbling upon it now. So you want to get Airwaves magazine as well. So call right now, 1-800-236-3636. Thank you, Eric. If you've already joined us here at PBS Wisconsin, thank you so much. We appreciate each and every call or on somebody that goes online. Every, and no matter how you become a member, it is so important to us here at PBS Wisconsin. We also have some special uh, donors that we would like to thank. These are uh, people and companies that have stepped forward with a leadership role to show their support for PBS Wisconsin. The first is the Stanley J. Cottrell Fund, ACB and Mary Elston Family, 
Eleanor and Thomas Wildrick family, and the Wooden Nickel Fund. These are people from all across the state, from, from Wausau, from La Crosse, from all across the state, and they truly value PBS Wisconsin, and it's something that they want to continue to see, being able to bring shows about Wisconsin, about the people of Wisconsin, the life that we live here in Wisconsin. So they've been able to step forward at that leadership role and show their support. You can join them this evening by going to your phone or, or going online and, and becoming a member of PBS Wisconsin. Remember, there are over 70,000 families that support PBS Wisconsin around our state from all corners of our state our support comes in and you can join the people that are, are doing that that love Michael Perry that love uh, the other specials that we have here all of the programming that we bring you year-round it all starts with a phone call to 1-800-236-3636 you've written such a wide variety over the years for young people about French philosophy and some wonderful memoirs what's on the docket next for you, Michael Perry. Well, just this month we released, a, I wrote a novella called 40 Acres Deep, and it's about a farmer. And it's, a, for me, a very, very dark piece of work, but it's been out for about a month, and the reactions we're getting are very positive, um, thoughtful, reflective responses. So I'm working on that, and then I've got two other books in the hopper that are long overdue, and I'm I promise my editors I'm hacking away at those. So you're scribbling away in your room over the garage that we've all heard so much about. Typity type, yep. <laughs> well, we look forward to those, and we look forward to working with you more at PBS Wisconsin, and it's uh, been terrific to enjoy this program tonight. We've been able to laugh and uh, reminisce and hear some wonderful stories, and we invite you to become a member or renew your membership or maybe increase your sustaining gift and pick up one of these wonderful books or the DVD at 800-236-3636. That's right. And when you do call, we've got those great thank you gifts. Starting at the $10 monthly sustaining level, we will send you the DVD, Michael Perry on the Road, the program that you are watching tonight. Um, at the $15 level, we will send you two autographed books, personally autographed by Michael Coop and Roughneck Grace. We'll send those along your way. And then at the $25 level, we will send you both of the books and all three of the Michael Perry uh, PBS Wisconsin specials, uh, the trilogy, if you will. That's at the $25 monthly sustaining level. So won't you call right now, go online, 1-800-236-3636. Well, if viewers want to find out more about you and your work, where can they discover stuff? Sneezingcow.com. <laughs> Sneezingcow.com, that's the place to start. Yeah. That is uh, unforgettable. <laughs> I, so I've been told. <laughs> I've probably, yeah, I've been telling that story for about 30 years, but it still seems to work. So. And based on a true incident, I assume. Unfortunately, yes, a jaw-dropping incident, although that would not be your best move. <laughs> We are so grateful you've been here and grateful for your support. We cannot do it without you. There's still time to make a contribution and still a few more stories. 800-236-3636. Manure, by the way, PBS one time they made me say manure. And it's the biggest regret of my professional career that I succumbed to that. It's manure. If you've ever gone ice fishing after a funeral, you're one of us. If you've ever gone to a funeral just to check out the buffet, <laughs> you're one of us. <laughs> I remember one time a publicist said to someone else, like, well, you know, he, he's on the fire department. He has a pickup truck and his own deer rifle. And I wanted to say, yeah, just like my mom. <laughs> they follow me around with a bunch of cameras here tonight. I think they're just trying to figure out how I've managed to make a living all these years. <laughs> I'll tell you my secret, too dumb to know when to quit. <laughs> Thanks so much. I will not say goodbye. I will say what we always say where I'm from, which is, well, I suppose, forward. <laughs> Funding for Michael Perry on the road is provided by Stanley J. Cottrell Fund, the ACV and Mary Elston family, the Eleanor and Thomas Wildrick family, Wooden Nickel Fund, Focus Fund for Wisconsin Programs, 
and friends of PBS Wisconsin.